Sound speeds, and I'm speaking to you, my fellow boom operators. Has your sound mixer ever told you, I hear handling noise, either from a plant microphone configuration or your microphone at the end of a boom pole? Maybe it's a poorly configured shock mount. Maybe the boom pole is not ideal for you, or maybe it's just extended out 20 feet, you're in an awkward situation and it's sticking to your hands. Whatever the case, if this has happened to you ever, then pay close attention because I'm about to introduce you to a solution that may be of help to you. Before we get going, full disclosure, Hi to Mike did send me all three of these Repose acoustic noise reducers in exchange for a fair review. I get to keep them following this review, but I'm not going to allow that to affect my opinion, so you can expect this to be a fair and honest review. Let's start off with a quick look at all three versions of the Repose. The one with white is designed for light weights, up to 0.6 kilograms or about 1 pound 5 ounces. The yellow is for medium weights, up to 1 kilogram or 2 pound 3 ounces, and the red is for anything heavier than that. They're made of aircraft grade aluminum and weigh only 1.58 ounces or about 45 grams. It's slightly larger than an ambient quick release, but the general shape is similar. Oh, and speaking of ambient, if you're thinking this is kind of like the floater, then you're right, but it's smaller, lighter, and totally a different design. Plus, it's also not discontinued. On the underside of a repose, you can screw in something like a Boom Pulse 3816 tip, and on the top is another 3816 thread for you to plug into something like a shock mount. The top thread is isolated from the rest of the repose using platinum silicone, and it's set to reduce vibrations passing through them according to the weight matching the color scheme. A tightening of the locking ring on top of the threads, and it will hold firmly to a shock mount. It's a very simple design, and the online documentation claims that it reduces handling noise by 8 dB. Because the design is so simple, the testing should be straightforward. My big question here is, does it actually reduce handling noise? So to test this, I'm going to do two different tests with two different boom poles, a K-Tech Mighty Boom and a Panamic Maxi. For the first test, I mounted up a boom mic on a less than ideal shock mount, and then I gave it a whirl. Then I added the repos and did the exact same test. I hardlined the microphone using a Soundspeeds XLR directly to my sound device's Mix Pre 6, and then I recorded the audio that came into the microphone, vibrations and all. Now, I will point out one thing. I did boost the audio that you're going to hear in post a little bit evenly across the board across all tests. So there's no skewed results here. It's all fair and even. For the first test, the repos certainly seem to do a good job of reducing handling noise, so we're going to move on to a second test. And for this one, I'm going to be a little more aggressive and tap my fingers along the boom pole up and down to see how that sounds. Now pay attention for a second because there's two different sounds I want to pull your attention to. The first is a low-end rumbling sound, which you're going to identify quickly as handling noise, but the second is the acoustic sound going through the air to the capsule of the microphone that is my hand sliding and tapping my way up and down the boom pole. If you listen on both the Panamic Maxi and the Mighty Boom and isolate each test individually, you'll notice that the level is the same on the tapping and sliding sounds, but the handling noise will be different. And that's what we're actually listening for. So let's listen to that test. Again, the repose was found to be effective, so I decided to take them to work with me and do some field testing. Now, I don't have any pictures or video that I can show you from set, NDAs and everything, but what I can tell you is that our sound utility was having some issues with handling using the mixer's boom pole. So what I did is I threw the repose on the end of the boom pole and surprisingly, the handling noise magically seemed to go away. She loved the repose and is talking about getting one for her kit. As for me, well, I already have these three, so I'm set. 
In this slow motion footage, you can see why the repose is so effective. No matter how hard I shake the microphone in the shock mount, you can clearly see the repose absorbing the impact. When the boom pole reverses direction, it bends, thus slowing the abrupt direction change. It does look pretty aggressive in slow motion, but then I was shaking the shock mount insanely hard so you could see exactly how effective it really is. Now, during normal movements, I should say, the repose works quietly and without big bendy movements as you would expect it to. I found that the repose works best if you mount it directly to the shock mount as opposed to your boom pole. Now, mounting it to the shock mount puts less weight on the repose, and if you run a cable off the shock mount down to the boom pole, transmitter, or an XLR tip, minimal weight is riding on the repose and it'll be most effective. If you use a Sonella Osic shock mount or a Zeppelin with a shorty XLR mounted to the side, then the repose is still effective, but you might have to mount up a medium or a heavy repose. If you screw the repose into your shock mount and then add a quick release tip on the end of your repose, you're going to find that it most quickly slips in and out of the quick releases on the end of your boom pole when you need it to. In my extensive testing, I found this to be the most effective way to make this whole thing work. I would not recommend mounting a repose directly to your boom pole. The reason being is that you change out shock mounts, don't you? Indoor microphone configurations, most likely you're going to be using a white one. If you move outdoors to a Zeppelin, you're probably going to need a yellow, and if you add a dead cat, most likely a red. And you don't want to have to change these on and off your boom pole depending on your configuration. And if you mount up a transmitter or something like that on the end of it, you're just going to be adding down even more weight. These should be added directly to your shock mounts because that's where they need to live for the weight you're going to be putting on the end of the boom pole and wanting to isolate. Remember, isolation and balance is key. It should also be noted that you shouldn't put the locking ring all the way closest to the silicone and then screw your shock mount all the way into it. The reason why is that when you go to unscrew it, it's going to be putting a lot of torque and tension onto the silicone itself. Instead, screw the shock mount about halfway down the threads and then meet it with the locking ring and then feel free to put as much torque on it as you'd like to. It will lock in place just fine. That will prevent useless damage to the repos. Each repo sells for just under $70 at the time of this video and I put links down in the description if you'd like to check it out. So what do I think of the repos? It's extremely effective, and it's also light enough for you to not notice the added weight to your end of your boom pole. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you this, the utility that was using this for quite a while, she did not notice that it wasn't on the end of her boom pole until she heard the added handling noise when it wasn't there. And then she was like, oh, I need that thing back, Alan. It works quite well at swallowing up a mild amount of handling noise, provided that you mount the right color to your shock mount microphone and windscreen combination. And if you don't, it's going to be less effective. It should also be said that this is not a solution that should allow you to be lazy, meaning that you still need to set up your shock mount correctly. If you don't, then you're basically going to be adding handling noise from not properly set up shock mount, and then you're going to be reducing it from the repos, and so you're back to status quo. So you still got to do your due diligence and set things up properly. So yeah, I give the repost two very big thumbs up here at SoundSpeeds. Now, if you're a boom operator that's occasionally called out for handling noise issues from your sound mixer and therefore you use gloves, you may be able to lose the gloves if you get yourself some repos. Now, I will point out this also. If you use a plant microphone inside of a car and the vibrations coming up the arm sometimes will overpower the shock mount, then the repost can also help there too. So there's two solutions that can definitely be useful on set. The only constructive criticism I would add is that I'm a big advocate for everything at the microphone into the boom pole to be black and solid black at that. So that would mean that the white, yellow, and red should be all black, maybe with exception of one of these little dots being white, yellow, or red. That would be enough for us to quickly at a glance see what it is, and plus, if you mount it to the end of a shock mount, then it's going to live there all the time anyway. So you don't really even need to really refer to these colors unless you're hot swapping them on and off a of shock mount, and in that case, simply look for the little dot and it would be enough, and it would still be black solidly. Now, the only other thing I would really say is that it would be great to see these sold as a kit. You want to buy like two or three of these? then you could get those at a discount, slight discount for a multi-pack. And then if you want to buy all three, Offer a multi-pack for that too. That to me would make a lot of people happy. So thank you for tuning into this episode of Soundspeeds. Be sure to tune in the future for more product testing, pro sound product reviews, and as always, sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.